Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamea's Promo, and today we will be covering everything that's brand new for Samsung One UI 2.5. Now that is if you have the Galaxy Note 20 or the Note 20 Ultra where it was already pre-installed, or if you just got the update yesterday on August 24th for the Samsung One UI 2.5 for the Galaxy S20 series. Now in this video, I will be covering some things for the Note, but then really everything is across the board for all Samsung Galaxy devices. There's about 10 brand new features, so make sure you watch this entire video to know everything new for your Galaxy phones. So the first one that we'll cover today will be the Pro Video Settings inside of the camera. So as you've seen with some of my past videos, I already talked about the Pro Video Settings, but now that it's here and it's also moving over inside of the Galaxy S20 series very soon, I do wanna cover a few different areas. So first off, there's a few different things you wanna take a look at. You do have your audio capture right over here and you can change what audio you're capturing on this little icon there. And you also have a histogram. Now this is just showing the darks, the shadows, your mid range, your highlights, and it kind of goes from dark over into light with that whole histogram right over here. So you can see that it will change as I move things around. Now, if you see that that line goes all the way to the top, that means you are clipping that type of color or tone, which means you don't have a, a solid, uh, well-rounded photo. So that's one of the cool things you're able to take a look at here is it gives you a lot of really good details. And if you want to see it or not see it, it's just by hitting on that icon on the top right-hand side. Now, for the audio levels over there, it will change based on what you choose for this icon and as well as the decibel levels. So this first one is Omni. That's really picking up all of the directions equally all around. Then this one here is grabbing everything from the front. So it's best capturing sound coming towards the front of the phone. So if this phone is facing me, that is the front. And then this is for the rear. So if you're trying to capture, maybe you're recording somebody speaking or you're recording a television or a waterfall, then you might want to move it over inside of rear. Then down over here, you can change how loud you want it to be. So as I bring this down, it's, you know, negative 12 decibels. You can see that this also went down. Now, if we move this one up over here, you can see that it's also moving up, capturing my voice just a little bit better. And I did not raise or change the volume of my voice. Now, the other thing that I do wanna show you is let's say that you're just inside of video or you're inside of photo. Uh, you can change some of these pro video settings just by going through the settings on the top left-hand side. It's really only one that you need to take a look at. And that is gonna be, let's say that you scroll halfway down. You can see right here, pro video size. So I showed this off in another leaked video, um, but this is where you can see everything <laughs> fully hands-on, uh, not sped up or just clipped. So this right here, you can see you can change it to 16 by nine for 8K recording. You can also do this really cool option here, which is 21 by nine for 8K. And then if you want your regular 16 by nine, then you can go through and change your resolution here. So you can move these around if you want it to be 4K, 60 frames per second, 30 or 24. Then you have your full HD, you can record at 120, 60, 30, and 24 frames per second, and then your regular HD video. Or if you want it to be more smooth, you can have the 60 frames per second, or if you want a really smooth video, full HD, go to that 120 frames per second. The second feature that has updated or changed is going to be single take. So originally it was a fixed time frame. So usually it was right around 10 seconds. If it noticed that not many things has changed in the frame, it might only do it for about eight or nine seconds. But if there's a lot of action happening, it will stay at that 10 seconds. Well, if you choose this option here, you can make it to where it's only capturing five seconds of a moment. So it's gonna save several photos and a couple videos. But I'd have to say maybe this one is only gonna come out with maybe five photos uh, and two videos. If you go to 10 seconds, this is gonna come out with maybe eight photos and three videos. The video that will come out will be the regular length video of 10 seconds, also a GIF, as well as a sped up version. And then you also have 15 seconds. So if you're at a NASCAR race, if you are watching somebody play golf and you don't really know exactly when a end result could be, or maybe something will happen right after the initial strike of the ball, you're able to capture a little bit more. So there you go, 15 seconds. And it might bring you a few extra photos and maybe another video. 
The third feature that was updated or changed is the support of third-party applications with the Android 10 gestures. Now, I always use the Android 10 gestures, which is where if you go inside of an application, if you swipe back from the screen on the left or right, it just takes you back. Or if you swipe up from the bottom, it takes you back home. But I believe what they're talking about is the third-party launchers. I'm not really somebody to use launchers. I like the skin that Samsung has. It makes it really easy to shoot YouTube videos for everybody because not everybody uses launchers. So if you are somebody who updated the Galaxy S20 series to Samsung One UI 2.5, or if you're using the Galaxy Note 20 series, you use third-party launchers, let me know in the comment section below if this works with the Android 10 gestures. So then this way everybody else knows as well. But so far, if you guys are loving this video, you guys like tips and tricks about Samsung Galaxy devices, make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to get notified for all future videos. The fourth feature that was updated is going to be your edge panel. So with the edge panel, this is a little bit more similar to what was on the Z Flip. So on the top is gonna to be two different applications. These are more suggested applications that you might open and it's based on if they're already open in your phone or not. So if you're already using these two different features or the applications, then they probably won't show on the top, I'm trying to show you something else you don't have. The bottom of this little line right here is gonna be the ones that you've saved in or created. So let's say that we take a look at what it used to look like on the Galaxy S20. When we move up over here, this is the apps page. And then when I move over, let's say that we go inside of Smart Select, the words is up over here. Usually it's in the middle or not even shown. And you can see that this was a lighter area. Uh, and then, then this one right over here is just a dark, you know, big rectangle. Uh, so you got your clipboard, you got your tasks, you got your tools. So again, everything is, you know, written on the top and then it looks like this. You also have this entire uh, showing of all of your different panels with that little icon there. Now, when you scroll through here, um, you're going to see that it looks a little bit different. And then they wrote the different edge panel in the very middle, which makes a little bit more sense. Uh, this is where you go inside of your settings. And then let's say that we go for one of these panels. This is where you can open up more applications. And then this is where you can make an edit. And so over here inside of this apps page, you are able to create one over here quite a bit easier when you have something that is set up on split screen. So how I created this one over here was I opened up Google Maps. And then I took my Google messages and I just placed it on the very bottom. And then there's an icon on the, on the, in the middle here that once you tap on that one, this is where you can add it as a favorite for your little edge panel. So that was how this one was created. When it came over here, I just went over to edit and then I was able to actually create one from the very top. So there is quite a few differences with edge panel. So that is going to be something that you might want to play with. Again, that is a part of Samsung One UI 2.5. The fifth feature that was added is going to be wireless DeX. But you're gonna see this icon here that's just called DeX. And if you don't see it on the very top, just go inside of your button order on the top right hand side, drag it on down, hit on done, and then now you have it inside of your quick settings. So I've already shown a video about wireless DeX. I'm gonna show some clips here right now. Once you tap on wireless DeX, you just wanna find the TV you wanna get it connected to. And then once it's connected, you're doing all of this with no cable. So this way you don't have to connect a cable on the bottom of your phone, be restricted, only plug it into a monitor. So now it'll work with TVs. And it's actually really cool because in this way you can do anything that you want on a larger screen. Another feature that's a part of Samsung One UI 2.5 that's actually very helpful. I'm gonna go inside of these tips right here, uh, just because all the Wi-Fi networks is actually mine here and, and nobody's really requesting anything. So I'm gonna show you this animation of what it's supposed to look like. So the nice thing about it is that let's say somebody is over at your house and they're trying to get onto your Wi-Fi network instead of them asking what the password is and you're trying to look it up or you have to yell across the other room or across the house. All that's gonna happen is they'll have this option here that says request password. Who has ever already connected to it will be able to get this little uh, notification then they're able to accept it and then it basically just puts in the password for them so maybe they don't even need to know the password it's just a simple way of logging onto a network where somebody is already there they're requesting the password and it's already passed through to that person the next new feature is actually very useful so a lot of times when you try to go through and you go through the whole find my mobile settings a lot of times it's only a way that you're able to find your mobile if your phone is on and connected so this new feature allows it to where it'll use other samsung galaxy phones around to find that lost phone even if it is offline so you want to go inside of your settings underneath biometrics and security and when you go to find my mobile you're going to have the option right over here so first off turn on that remote unlock turn on the send last location so when it is at a very low battery percentage you'll be able to send the last location of where it was 
And then you have this one here, offline finding. So locate your phone even if it's offline and help others find their devices. So when this is turned on, even if I don't lose my phone, if there's another Samsung Galaxy phone in the area that did get lost and they're also offline, then my phone here is able to help other people find that lost offline phone. So again, this will allow your phone to be found by other people's Galaxy devices, even, in, even when it's not connected to a network. It will also allow your phone to be used to scan for lost Galaxy devices that may be nearby. You can also find watches and earbuds if this was the last device they connected to. So this is something that's actually really cool that they added in. Uh, really good thinking by Samsung. So this way, even if your phone is not connected, you're still able to have a possibility of getting it found. The next cool feature, we're just going to go inside of Google Messages just because it has to have a Samsung keyboard involved. Now, usually I do use Gboard, but Samsung keyboard is really cool. But in order for me to show this next feature, if you use Samsung keyboard in really any application, uh, it's really going to come in handy if you use it with like Facebook Messenger, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and especially with messaging. When you go inside of the more option, you're going to now have a tab or a little icon that says YouTube. Now underneath YouTube, it's just going to find something that is popular. But let's state that I wanted to send one of my videos. So I typed in Jimmy promo and it's going to find the videos that I just recently updated or uploaded. So this way, if I wanted to send one of my videos simply just by doing this right here, I'm going to send it off. So this really helps. So this way you don't have to leave the messaging application to go inside of YouTube, find the video, share it and things like that. You can just find it right here without the, the need of leaving the application. The next feature is one that I didn't really find just yet. So if you guys find it, you can also write comments below. Uh, but when you go inside of lock screen and then you go underneath the always on display, I read that there was something new with always on display with the clock style that you were able to use your bitmojis. So when you use any of these clock faces where you're able to type, it'll actually allow you to put in your own bitmoji um, inside of your always on display. Now for the next feature, I'm gonna look at this list here of everything that's you know brand new with this update. And underneath the Wi-Fi category it says, if quality information on nearby Wi-Fi routers can be measured, this information will appear as very fast, fast, normal, or slow. So usually you'd be able to tell if it's a nice network, you know, based on how many bars is there. But then this one's gonna let you know if it's fast or slow, things like that. So you can see here that it's very good connection, not as good connection. But when I go inside of the settings, mine doesn't really say fast or slow, very slow, very fast, nothing like that. But it is showing me my network speed. So if you guys are noticing where it says fast, slow, very fast, if you guys can just, you know, take a screenshot of it, send it over on Twitter, Jimmy is promo, just so I can see of what, you know, what it looks like. So I can see here, you know, how fast the network speed is, but it doesn't say fast, slow. But again, that is one of those things that is new part of Samsung One UI 2.5. And then the last feature that was updated is going to be Samsung Notes. So the cool thing is that the Samsung Notes update is a part of the Galaxy Note 20, Note 20 series, but it's not really a part of Samsung One UI 2.5. My Galaxy S20 Ultra just got this update today and it's actually pretty cool. So let me show you what it looks like with the smaller Galaxy S20. Let's say we go inside of Samsung Notes. You can see that on this newer version, it has PDF. So it's a way you're able to add in PDFs. You can write on top of it. Uh, you're able to take notes. You're able to use your highlighters. Uh, when you hit on this plus button over here, let's say we bring this down, you can see that your entire task bar is on the bottom. And then right over here, you can see that most of it is on the top. So your text, drawing and coloring, uh, adding in your uh, attachments, which is the same up over here. But then on the very bottom of your phone, this is where, but then on the bottom of the phone over here, this is where you can change between everything. So you have an icon right here that'll go between your keyboard and then as well as drawing. This is where you have all of your different utensils. And then really quick, just to show you that it is on my Galaxy S20 Ultra. So let's move right over here. Let's go to Samsung Notes. You can see the PDF icon is right there. We hit this plus button. Uh, everything is set up the exact same here on the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which is actually pretty cool. So let's move this phone out of the way as well. Let's go through some of these icons pretty quick. I'm gonna make a full dedicated video of only Samsung Notes, just because there's a lot. So we're gonna do the bare minimum on this one. So again, it's not a full length video. So with this one here, you have your icon of your utensils. So you're gonna have uh, this fountain pen, the calligraphy pen. This one right here is just a regular pen. This is a pencil and then the calligraphy brush. And then right here is where you can change all the different colors. You have the entire color grid here. Now let's say that there is one that you like. So you went over to pencil, maybe you went to blue. If this is one that you favorited, and you don't wanna keep on going through and making all these changes, just hit that little star 
and it's actually right up over here and saved as a favorite pen. So favorite pen is a part of also the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, but it's quite a bit different. Uh, it's shown the same, but it's located somewhere else. The other cool thing that you are able to do is like, let's say that I, I am drawing right here, right? If I hit on the S Pen button once, it's going to change the style of pen that I use all the time. Again, I'm only hitting the button once to change that. Now this next icon here, is going to be the eraser mode. So let's say that we were in eraser mode and I wanted to switch to drawing, double press the button and now you are drawing. Now the reason why you can see nothing is going past this line here is because these are all set up as pages. So I'm going to go right there. I'm going to say that this is now my finger. You can see that there's just a couple different pages here, a line separation. So let's say again, we're drawing there, drawing here, scrolling down. You can see how now more pages are being added. So it's a way that you're able to have everything kind of in order. Uh, but again, let's go back into switching. So again, double press, which is your uh, utility between drawing as well as the eraser. Then hitting the button once will switch between the favorite pens. The other thing you can do is you can press and hold and it acts as the eraser if you don't want to completely switch it. So here I am drawing, erasing, drawing, erasing, drawing, <laughs> erasing. So a press and hold of the button really fast as you're already on the screen uh, is going to switch it quite a bit quicker. This is going to be a way that you're able to select things. You can do it as a free lasso or you can have it as a fixed rectangle. This one's going to be basically switching the indent and making things bigger and smaller. Uh, this icon here is switching things, you know, converting it to text. So let's say we go back to writing and let's say that I say, hey, now when I go inside of this text, it's going to convert it for me and then it puts it right there. This just means that you're going backwards. Uh, if you need to go forwards, if you erase something and you wanted to go back. Now this one's actually pretty cool. You can change your style. So let's say that we have our drawing right here. And now I actually wanted to change that to a different color, but instead of me deleting it and then redrawing it, uh, when you choose on this option here, you can change how you want it to look. So let's go to this lighter blue. Let's make it a little bit thicker. And so now when I go like that, it's going to change the style for me. So it's actually pretty nice. Uh, this one right up over here is going to be your easy writing pad. It's going to put a little indented area there. And then you just say, whoa, hey, actually, this is a completely different pen than what I wanted to use. But you can see what it's going to do is it's going to align everything for you. And then this right here is going to be your shape correction. So you got a line, you got a circle, you got yourself a little square, and it's going to make everything look a little bit better for you. And then now for the very top, you did see where you can change it between if you want it to draw or if you want your S Pen to act as a finger. This is where you can insert different attachments and this is where you can share it. You can save as file. You can sort the pages. So as I said from before, maybe you needed to move some of these things around. So I'm gonna move this one actually right up over here. Uh, this page should probably be right up over there. And then now we're looking good and I can hit on that X. The next things that you also have is your page template. So if you want it to look different, uh, you can have different grids in the back. You also have background color. So right now this is set up for if you're using dark mode uh, or if you're using the regular not dark mode. So you can see that it's going to apply this. So it was a little dark, but you can change all the different backgrounds for all the different pages uh, if you need it to be a different color. And you can go through and, and make all those changes. I'm gonna keep it there for stock. Uh, and I also do like to use dark mode. So I'm gonna just leave it the way that it is. And then you also have add to favorites and you also have add tags and finger drawing on. So that's really what this icon is right there. But I hope you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Did you know if you like the button, the thumb turns blue? Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely, you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.